so cute. Come and say hi. Say hello. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> I'm finna cook, okay? Can I cook? Yeah. You gonna watch movie? No way. Alright, go watch movie. Go give Johnny a back or water. Hello, Gurgeny YouTubers. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys for clicking on this video. So today you guys are going to be cooking with me. So let's get started. Alright guys, so today I'm going to be making baked barbecue chicken. I have chicken thighs right here and I also have chicken thighs in my crock pot as well. My family, my children don't tend to eat a lot. My husband prefers chicken breast and I prefer chicken thighs. So I'm choosing chicken thighs. He don't eat it if I'm cooking, right? So anyways, he might eat it regardless. These are boneless and skinless chicken thighs as well. So cuts back on a little bit of fat and the hassle of eating around the bone, right? So I have the ones that are in this pan because these are already rinsed off and they're gonna be cooked in this pan. I like to do this when I know I'm gonna go straight to putting it in the oven rather than marinating it. If I was marinating, I'll put it in a bowl or in a Ziploc a, a zip bag and put it in the refrigerator. I have my chicken in my crock pot because I'm going to be making chicken, my own check, chicken taco uh, mix basically, what I always tend to make. So what I'm going to be using for the chicken that's in the pan is some Lori seasoned salt. So let's start seasoning. I have my little toms to use because I don't want to use my hands, I got on nails. So, I'm going to season it up with a little Lori seasoning salt. Not too much. I really don't like my food seasoning. I feel like you can always add season afterwards. Then beforehand you over season, then it just don't taste good. So I have some oregano leaves as well. Just a little bit. I don't really, whenever I do like chicken guys, like it's never like an actual like recipe, like it has to be the same seasonings. I like to switch up seasoning because it's chicken. You can season it however you want to, mix seasonings up and see how it tastes. I'm using lemon pepper right now. My lemon pepper, come out, let me toss it. Using some lemon pepper, yeah, I never use an actual like recipe for my stuff because I'm like, there's no point. You can season it however you want to and it still can come out fine. So that's what I'm doing, kind of doing a different seasoning today. This is cayenne pepper. I'm gonna put a little bit on here because I don't want it too spicy for the kids. But to give it a tad bit of spice will help out. Ooh, that was too much. Sorry. All right. Look at me, you're gonna burn somebody in their mouth off. It's all right, because me, and my children actually like spicy. And my husband. It doesn't bother, but let's see. I'm gonna just flip these over and season again. I am not going to add any cayenne pepper on this side since I put a little bit too much on the other side. So and now I'm gonna be putting on some margarine. I like to put margarine or you put butter, but margarine has more of a saltiness with it. So I like to put some margarine on it to help butter everything kind of up a little bit. So now that we're done, I'm gonna put it in the oven. My oven is preheated to 350, and I'm just gonna put it in for about 20 minutes at first. I'm gonna check on it, I'm gonna flip it, and then I'm gonna probably put it back on for another 20 minutes. I never really put like exact timing. I just go by when the chicken kinda of looks like it's done, and when I obviously check inside of the chicken and make sure the temperature is good and all that stuff. You know, you get me, all right. Okay, so now let's do our chicken that's in the crock pot. The chicken in the crock pot is also chicken thighs as well, the same thing. 
My family don't eat a lot of it, so they're, they're why, that's the reason why I decided, I can't talk. That's the reason why I decided to just make a dinner for tomorrow as well. Instead of packaging it back up and putting it in the freezer or refrigerator, I'm just going to make the actual dinner today and then let it cool down, of course, put it in the refrigerator. And then tomorrow, dinner is already ready. So, what I'm going to be adding to my chicken thighs, it looks like that inside the pot, is some black pepper. Some fresh black pepper. I'm also gonna put a little bit of oregano, not a lot. I'm gonna be using some adobo. I'm also gonna be using a taco seasoning pack from Aldi's. I think this is Aldi's brand. I don't know, because I never see this obviously in any other store. I'm gonna put the whole packet in here and then I'm gonna put a little water in here. I have my water in here, it's filled like halfway, not the whole way because we don't need that much water. Sorry, I don't know what that was, hiccup or what. So also I have margin here, I am going to put a little bit of margin in here as well, get some oils kind of flowing with it. This margin is pretty soft, I'm going to use a plastic fork, come back on the dishes, you know. So there we go. And then my last ingredient that I add to my chicken tacos. Every single time I make chicken tacos, if I don't add any of those other seasonings, I always add taco seasoning and I always add the chunky uh, salsa. So chunky salsa from all of these as well or you get it from Walmart. I just always add the chunky salsa because it just gives it that extra flavor. This is already seasoned good the way that they made this. So this is what I usually always use. So I'm gonna put, you don't need to use the whole can though. So I just literally put maybe, I guess you could say like, if I had to, like a half a cup maybe, I don't know. I'm using this little fork to kind of toss it around a little bit in here, but you don't need to use that. I'm just doing it because I have this fork here. I wanna make use of this little plastic fork. I'm going to use my actual tongs because you do want to toss the chicken though. You want to toss it around Get the other chickens that are at the bottom mixed in with the seasonings that you put on top. So what I'm going to do is put this in the actual crock pot heater and start letting this cook on high. Okay guys, so the chicken is done as well. This is how my chicken turned out. This is how it looks. It looks good. See the oil still coming off of it, which means it's not super dry. And it's good I opened it to see if it looks like it's done basically so what I'm gonna do is just put this in the microwave I'm just gonna you know roll the foil up put it in the microwave so it can keep its moisture so it don't dry out too much the good thing it is chicken thighs because chicken thighs hold more moisture they're more juicy because they're dark meat if it was like chicken breast you definitely gotta make sure because to me chicken breast is dry dry than that thing no matter how much you want to juice it up it could be very dry Unless you like basically kind of like not undercook it, but it's not like crazy cook. So I'm just gonna put this in a microwave until the rice is this so we can be able to eat. Okay guys, so now we're finished to do our side basically. Our side today is gonna be arroz, arroz con gondoles. I don't know how to roll the R's and nothing like that. Hi guys, so for my chicken, I know I forgot to put barbecue sauce on it. Well, what I usually do is the last like five ten minutes of it, I add barbecue sauce and honey. I just mix it together, and I put it on top of my chicken, and I just let it finish cooking like that. And I, that's how I make my barbecue chicken. Just very simple. But I didn't put it in this video because I was very distracted. Honestly, my kids, my husband just kept distracting me throughout this whole video as you guys can see so also I decided to fast forward my arroz con gondolas because this is my second time making it I am following the recipe of someone else so I want to be able to make it the way that I like to make it in that video I will show you guys at another timing so that way nothing will be too confusing about what I'm doing because I did it and it turned out great my first timing and it also turned out very good as well amazing even better than the first timing this time and actually but I still think that I want to tweak it a little bit more so once I tweak it to my complete liking and more so when I say liking a smaller mix 
then that's when I will do another video showing you guys how I'm going to be making my own Oruz con gondolas as well and this video was a little too long so I'm trying to cut it down as well so that's one of the other reasons why I didn't choose to continue to film Now I do want to taste this. Obviously I know it's going to taste good because it's the same as before, but let's just give it a taste test as well. It's hot. Because the eye is still warm, so I'm going to just move it off the oven completely. For an additional side that we're having with our chicken for today, and this rice is going to go good too with our, with our empanadas, with our chicken empanadas tomorrow. We can have some more rice as well. So for the side as well, I'm going to do some plantains. Now I always do plantains. I've been making tostones for years already. But I'm going to just do that now just so that way we can have some juicy plantains because these are like really ripe already. So I heated up my oil. I put oil in my pan. I just use some regular vegetable oil. And what I'm doing for another side is plantains, like I said. So what I do is my plantains look like this, or the other one, this one was actually a little green on the outside, but when you cut it, it kind of looked like that already. So I'm just cutting them in, in these little wedges, basically. And I'm gonna see how good they fry. They fry good enough to make tostones, and that's what I would do. If they're too soft and they just won't behave right, then I'm gonna end up just keeping them whole. Um, I have made tostones when they were soft too, but sometimes they're just hard to kind of keep together. They're too wobbly, whatever, so. We're finna see, and I'm finna bag back because I hate oil now. Alright, it's good, it's good. <laughs> I don't like oil popping on me at all. And these literally just need to brown, like two of them, about three of them already is browned already. So I'm finna take them right back out. Take them right back out, put them on a, a napkin to drain some of the oil a little bit, and then I'm gonna flatten them out. No, these are plantains. So I use the bottom of this glass to flatten them out. Now when the plantain is not green, it is more juicier. When it's completely green, it's more drier and it's better for tostones. Tostones because, you know, it will flatten out, it will be hard. But when it's not, it's more juicier and, you know, you can flatten out as best as you could. But I really did like it. It was amazing. I put it in ice water. I like to do it like this just to put them in there and then take them out, shake them off, and put them in the oil, and then that is it. So, yeah. Hi guys, so I am done completely with my dinner for tonight. Now dinner for tomorrow is still in the crock pot. Remember, that's gonna go for some hours. And this is how my plate looks. Mommy, that's a bit spicy. So, this is my plate, guys. And my husband's actually getting more quarter rice. You like it, babe? Yeah, it's good. Thank you. So, um, yeah, this is the rice, this is the chicken, and these are the plantains. So the plantains are small, but they're nice and juicy, and it gives the sweetness to the meal that we have here. So I hope you guys like this video, watching me cook, cooking with me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you are going to try it, let me know in the comments below. And subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos. I do a bunch of everything. Next video probably going to be up is 
me showing you guys my DIY fireplace because I did a DIY fireplace, a big one as well. So I hope you guys go and watch that. Stay tuned for that video. And also I'm going to be doing some Halloween stuff because I am in the Halloween mood like crazy. So I'm going to be doing some nails and some DIY little projects early. So thank you guys once again. Adios. Hi hey guys, so I decided to come back and show you guys the empanadas because I know uh, might as well, right? So um, my camera actually needs to be charged, so I'm trying to hurry up. So it's gonna be just a quick little thing. The empanadas, the actual like bread and the dough that I use is actually store bought. It is the Goya one, or I've actually tried a different one as well from like Strax, and um, it was good as well. So. I think it's whatever one you possibly choose and also you can make it from scratch. I'm using pepper jack cheese and I'm using sharp cheddar cheese. Instead of a whole one, I am cutting it in half and I'm just going to place it on one side. I'm going to decide, I'm putting corn inside as well, just a little corn because a lot can't fit in these, especially once you like fold it and press it down. So guys, this is the chicken that we made as well. It's going to be like big chunks, you don't want to break it apart. And once it's actually done, completely done, that's when you can kind of like shred it and also after you have drained it as well. So I drained it and this is the juice. I put it inside of a container. I just take a, just a small bit of the chicken because like I said, a lot can't fit in this to begin with. So you're going to fold it. I like to fold it, press it down first and then you're going to use a fork and then press down on it so hopefully you guys can kind of see it I don't want to zoom or nothing because it's just really quick just to show you guys we cooking the empanadas with the chicken that we made yesterday so basically just pressing it down on one side and then we're going to press it down again on the other side and this is how they're going to look when they are fried you have the oil you heat the oil up and you put them in a the fryer they literally go so quick within maybe i say like three like three minutes honestly three to five minutes so this is how they look once they have fried up Alright guys, so I'm going to do a, a taste with you guys. So I showed you guys me making it and those are my kids. I have my size on the side because the plate wasn't big enough for the empanadas to fit on too. But the sour cream, I do like a lot of sour cream so that's why you saw me pouring so much. I like to just dip, you know, I'm a condiment person basically. So I'm going to try an empanada for you guys. So, and then I have the juices on top so I can give extra juicy. I like myself juicy. It's good. It's good. So, basically, I just dip my empanada in the sour cream with the cilantro. It helps to pick up the onion and the uh, cilantro. So, that's how I'm eating it. Delicious. So, thank you guys for watching again. So, see you. Bye.